Buff Nation. Let's go. Friday, baby. Happy Friday. It Friday happy vibes. Friday. Here at the DMVR bar. We are presented by Illegal Peds. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour, 36 p.m. every single day. My name is Jake Schwan. It's RK sitting next to me. Happy Friday, bro. Happy Friday, and I need that jacket that Coach Prime has on in this <laughs> thumbnail. And then someone sent me the link to get one. Obviously, his is customized. That's Coach Prime, so I, I, mine wouldn't say that. Uh, I'm, I'm saving up. Saving nice. up. Not cheap. Can you get an RK patch on the... On the Do I, I want that? Right shoulder there? I don't know. Coach Prime's got I his could, name on for his. Sure. I feel like I just want to rep the buffs. Okay. Fair enough. That is a pretty slick jacket, though. It's so good. Um, he's been wearing a couple. He had a what was it? A, like a black one that he was wearing yep, too. The all black one is sick too. Man is just Dripping. everything he does, man. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about today or today about what happened yesterday. Yep. But first, Ryan, do you know what Ion TV is? <laughs> uh, no, I don't, do you, I don't know one iota about it. Do you want to know what Ion TV is? I would have lived a better life <laughs> having never known anything about Ion TV. Well, I'll tell you why we're talking about Ion TV today. Uh, Brett McMurphy had a tweet for this Pac 12 media deal. I don't even know the Fiasco. word. Fiasco is a great word to call it. Um, looks like they have emerged as the leader for the Pac 12 media rights. Honestly, like. <laughs> just uh, shaking his head. Just like stab me with a. Burning iron. Because of Ion TV? Yes. <laughs> Ion TV has ruined my day. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Like, um, what are we. That's not acceptable. No. You're telling me, you no know, Hulu, YouTube TV, Fubo. Like, honestly, more people would see it if you put it on altitude. <laughs> For real. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Um, but Ion is apparently in the lead. To get these Pac-12 media rights. That's not a it. thing. Ion isn't a thing. How could it be in the lead? I don't know. Uh, Brett McMurphy said so. So I think... Is uh, it a streaming service? Is it a channel? Um, I think it's a TV channel. I think. I don't know. It's a TV channel. It is a TV channel. Yeah. So Pe People in the comments, have you ever came across Ion TV while scrolling through your TV guide? Like, I legitimately saw... The Colorado Avalanche play a game seven on USA Network. Yeah. And I thought that was like rock bottom for sports. Um, but no, having to watch the Buffs play on Ion TV is below that. Um, do you remember when hockey was on like that versus channel? Yep. Way back in the day? Yep. Yep. Reeks of that. Um, and then, like, I'm pretty sure, hell, for all I know, I think the Mountain West might still be on that channel. <laughs> right. Um,. <laughs> One of some of the shows that are on Ion TV to give you an idea of this network, Ryan? I don't, I don't want to know. Well, we're going to talk about them. Have you ever heard of Blue Bloods? Yes. What about Bones? Yes. Um, now ask me if I've ever watched any. Have you ever no, watched any? No. <laughs> what about Chicago Fire or Chicago PD? Have heard of it. Never watched it. Uh, you have to have heard and watched at least one of these two. Criminal Minds and Law and & Order SVU. Definitely have watched some Law & Order SVU. Um, uh, compelling show. What about Leverage or Leverage Redemption? Uh, nope. No? Nope, they have no leverage over me. MacGyver? <laughs> MacGyver, I thought, was like a skit in SNL. The Pac-12 is trying oh, to MacGyver to get... Or, oh, that is... They're so trying to MacGyver, MacGyver then? <laughs> MacGyver, like, isn't that someone who, like, fixes something? Oh, okay, so that's what I was going to say. Pac-12 trying, trying, trying to MacGyver, MacGyver their TV deal. Exactly. Uh, NCIS? It's going to be a no for me. Well, great news, Ryan. You can watch all those shows along the side, the buffs, and uh, all your favorite Pac-12 games this upcoming football Night season. Night Court. <laughs> Night Court. There you go. <laughs> Grandma's 100% watch. Right? <sighs> Grandma's going to have uh, Pac-12 takes coming up this fall. Damn it. <laughs> the, like, the, the fact that they let this get out is an atrocity. It's so bad. It's worse to just not have any interest at all than to have interest from Ion TV. Yeah. Like, Henry was joking about this this morning. I don't even think it's a joke. He's like, we should make a bid for the Pac-12. If Ion TV's in the mix, like, 
put one camera on one end zone, one on the other, one up top. Alyssa's got the switcher. There you go. And we're broadcasting the Buffs games. Wow. All of a sudden, we become we go from podcast house host to play by play. Yeah, wow. we can handle it. Wow. Amazing. I did a little play by play uh, on student radio back in the day. Actually, I, I didn't do the play by play, I did the, the color. Uh, I've never done either. It's kind of fun. Seems like it'd be fun. Thing is, like, you just, there's very little time to talk. Like, it's right. just, it's so repetitive. Like, one person describes the play, the other person talks a little bit about it, but then the other person has to start describing the play again. It's just mm-hmm. like, like I, I'm so used to just being able to expound on things that. You just really don't get to do that during play-by-play. <laughs> Kevin Pryor says next next network rumored is Pac-12 on OnlyFans. <laughs> Honestly, better, more exposure in more ways than one. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, um, I guess it's worth mentioning that Stuart Mandel came out and said that the Athletic has sources with direct knowledge of the situation, and they say that Ion is not involved. So a little source off going on with this. I love a source off, and when, whenever I see a source off. I side with the side that is saying what I like better. <laughs> there you go. So, so Stuart Mandel. Let's go. Mandel, baby. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm a Mandel man. This is just such a mess. This is the biggest mess. I, this conference is done, right? Yeah. I mean, next thing we're going to hear, Cartoon Network is interested. Right. Nick at Night. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is disaster. Out and out disaster. Someone said just put the buffs on well-off media. That might be our best shot. Yep. Um, maybe we partner w- with Well Off because I haven't seen Well Off go live on YouTube yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll DNVR X Well Off. Uh, we've got Bucky uh, on the sidelines. Sideline lines. reporting. Yes. Yep. Darius on the other side. Yes. This would slap. <laughs> Absolutely. Let us let us have a trial run for the spring game. For sure. Why not? I know. It would definitely do numbers. <laughs> Uh, RK and Jake, how about getting them on channel? Are they Their on channel own like channel. Text? Oh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Buffalo well. Network? Why not? Uh, we'll see, man. What a mess, though. Comedy Central? Spike TV? <laughs> <laughs> then the games are definitely rigged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Game uh, Show Network? Oh, Lord. In between reruns of Family Feud? They're going to be on like channel like 9,832 on DirecTV. How? How is this happening? Uh, it's wild. I don't know. Like I said, I trust Rick George to get us out of this mess. He got us out of the last mess we were in, and I was one of the only people who trusted him then. Yep. Now a lot of people trust him, but he'll get us out of this mess. <laughs> Steven says, can't wait to watch the buffs on the CW right after some live golf and whose line reruns. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what channel two, three. I think so, it's yeah. easy to find. Uh, at least the jokes are funny because this is this is painful. If I was someone who wanted to troll us, I would make a graphic of Coach Prime with the Ion Network logo on it. And then it says, I am hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> we might be hard to find come yes. uh, come fall. The spring game might be easier to watch than Pac-12 football this fall. That's basically a guarantee at this point. Insane, man. Apple TV, just come through for us, please. Uh, please. I mean, I wasn't an Apple TV fan at this point. Please, God, help. Uh, let's move on to talk about yesterday's press conference. We cut up. I cut up some clips for you guys. Uh, but we got about 15 minutes of content. Lauren to talk says about. Charles in charge is on Ion. <laughs> you know, uh, it might be on again. That, but we'll be talking about the defense. Charles Kelly yes, in charge. Yes, exactly. Uh, Oprah Winfrey Network. Why not? She's got money to throw around, right? God, I, I know you know Coach Prime knows Oprah. Oh, of course. Let's go. Let's put us on. What is that? Own? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't watch. O W N <laughs> Oprah Winfrey Network. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. That would be on own the Nile. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, I guess before we talk about everything, shout out to Breckenridge Brewery. DMVR is teaming up with Breckenridge Brewery to give some lucky DMVR fans the ultimate experience for two games. First game, Avs on March 9th, Thursday, against the LA Kings. We're giving away two tickets in Section 102, Row 5. Close enough to smell the players. Lexus Club access as well. Parking pass and DMVR gear. 
And then on the 30th of March, which is also a Thursday, the Nuggets will be taking on the Pelicans. We're giving away two tickets, courtside row two. Again, Lexus Club Access, parking pass, DMVR gear. Head on over to thednbr.com slash Breck Sweeps and complete the form to enter. Must be 21 or older. Links are also in the description. Winners will be selected one week before each game. Get on that Avs one. We are closing in on a week to go for that. All right, week Ryan. until I turn 31. Wow. <clears throat> Congratulations. Nope. My condolences. Thank you. Um, <laughs> all right. What is the first one we have here, Lissa? First one we have from yesterday is Sean Lewis. Um, Nikki Edwards, our friend, asked him why he left Kent State for Colorado, and he gave his answer whenever you're ready, Alyssa. Yes, Jimmy said all the Coach Full interviews are on uh, the YouTube page also. Okay, are you sure that Okay. It's not often when a head coach takes an offensive coordinating position. Why did you decide to take this job? Yeah, I mean, it was a tremendous opportunity. Uh, I knew there'd be great things that were happening here. And, you know, the work that we had done at Kent State was second to none and, and really proud of what we did there. But knew that for what I was after, what the opportunity was for my family and everything that this could provide for my family uh, now and in the future is something I had to jump at. There you go. Pretty straightforward. And I think it's what we've talked about uh, in the past about why he would make this move. Um, it's a it's a one step backward for two steps forward type of move, right? Mm -hmm. um, he was going to have to have immense success at Kent State to get a Power Five head coach job. He actually did. He burst onto the scene at Kent State, put together some of the best offenses in the in all of the NCAA. Yep. And then they took a step back. Why? Well, they lost their All Conference quarterback, Dustin Crum, uh, and you know a few other guys and I think what what coach Lewis realized is I don't know if we're ever going to be able to have the consistent success at Kent State um, that I'm going to need to get hired as a head coach where I want to be um, now he comes to Colorado <clears throat> and I just guarantee you if they have the level of success at Colorado that he had early in his career at Kent State he'll be gone <clears throat> almost immediately yep and someone somewhere is going to say we want that electric offense uh with us and so yeah uh if the buffs win i'll guarantee it if the buffs win eight games or more next year sean lewis is getting a head coaching job in the power five for sure um going back to dustin crumb's 2018 season which was well he didn't start then but that was sean lewis's first year uh, Dustin Crum over four to one touchdown to interception ratio completed 66% of his passes over 7,000 yards passing as well. I mean, they were moving and led the nation in pace of play yep. plays per game. Um, efficiency right up there too. Did you say 7,000 yards passing in his career? Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, next Sean Lewis video is two and a half minutes long. Alyssa, if you can find it. Um, this is the question. This is both questions we asked. My question about where he, I guess, got his style of offense from. I'd word it way better in the video. Mm -hmm. And then your question about uh, what was your first one again? Um, uh, about what makes a great play caller. Exactly. Uh, we went back to back. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. We did it a couple times, actually. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Alyssa. Right here. There you are. What's um, up? <laughs> I'm curious just who influenced your style of offense, either teams or coaches in your career? Yeah, I was very fortunate to be around some really, really good coaches, right? We played for Coach Alvarez. Coach Paul Christ was my position coach for a couple of years. And then, you know, under Coach Bielema as well at Wisconsin. And then for six years being with Coach Babers and, and you know, the Temple style of play and then kind of taking – you know, some of my own ideas and different factors of it all. But, you know, the organizational leadership aspect of Coach Alvarez, I lean very heavily on him as a head coach and now guiding and leading, you know, the offensive side of the ball here. You know, there's a lot of structural things that we do that are very similar to what he did. Um, coach Chris, from a game planning and play caller perspective, I knew I wasn't very good player. You guys can look at the stats for all that. So I, I really picked his brain when we were together, um, you know, because this is something I knew that I wanted to get into and it was fortunate for him to, to share some wisdom. And then, you know, 
I, I'm not here if it's not for Coach Babers. You know, he took me into his office and, you know, hired me because I was a Chicagoland guy and he was at Eastern Illinois and, again, saw something enough in me that he wanted to teach me. And, and from being with him as slot receiver coach to having all the receivers and then to ultimately getting the opportunity to, to call it and coach the quarterbacks. And, again, his tutelage, his guidance, and his perspective on life, you know, has led me to this spot. Hey, Coach Ryan Konigsberg, DNVR Sports. Uh, I'm curious what you think the biggest difference is between a successful and an unsuccessful play caller. It's a good question. I would say knowing your people, right? Knowing what's around you. Uh, I think at times we probably get a little bit too rigid as play callers to say, hey, this is who we are, this is what we're going to be, and this is how we go about it, as opposed to knowing and assessing what you have and how you need to play it. Because again, at the end of the day, like we can grab markers and go on these boards, and I feel pretty confident in X's and O and anyone that's in this room, right? But it, it, it's about the players. They make plays. You know, whatever we draw up, I mean, an expo mark is probably, what, five cents or whatever it is, right? Like, that's the worth of what it is. But players make plays. So you got to know your players, and you got to put them in a position to be successful. And you got to be able to know where they're at mentally and what they feel confident in doing so that when you're in a defining moment where you got to have a play, you know, you're able to play to their strengths, and they feel confident in doing it and executing it. Impressive I guy. I love that answer. Love it. <clears throat> and, and it's maybe the – as good as I've heard, you know, you hear, like I said yesterday, you hear all sorts of coaches say, we got to play to the player's strengths. Yep. But him pointing out, like, knowing what the players do best, so when you're in a crucial situation, you know what to call, and you know that they're going to be able to execute it. Just thinking of it in that, like, um, micro moment, rather than in a macro sense of, yeah, you should call players, you should design your offense around your player's strengths. Talking about it down to the point of, like, I'm now imagining he's like, I know Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders are unstoppable on a slant against man coverage. And I know we're getting man here, and I'm calling this because it's third and six. We're in our own territory uh, in a game where we're up three. We just have to move the chains to make sure we don't give the ball back then to tie the game. And, like, that, that really is what defines a great play caller is, like, that moment there, knowing exactly what to go to. Obviously, you know, Travis routes the hell out of some corner. Shador puts the ball, you know, right where it needs to be. They move the chains, game over. Mm -hmm. um, Dino Babers, just one of the most underrated coaches in America, I think. And Sean Lewis kind of talked about why he was so great and Dino's experience as a coach, how that helped Sean Lewis's experience as a coach. I was pushing for Dino Babers in the Carl Durrell cycle for the Buffs to go after Dino. Um, I, I completely agree with you. You know, I don't think he's ever going to be able to have the – it's kind of what we were just talking about with Sean Lewis at Kent State. I don't think he's ever going to be able to have the sustained success at Syracuse. Wow, sustained success at Syracuse. Um, Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> that he needs to have uh, to get to the level where we can really see how good he is. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Maybe he needs to do – pull a Sean Lewis uh, and, and take a step back to then take a step forward. But I truly believe that he is an amazing coach. And if you talk to people who have played for him, they'll tell you that too. And, you know, Sean obviously talked mm -hmm. about him as well. So uh, it's cool. I love these, like, influence trees yeah. and hearing about who trickled down to who and what, you know, made you this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, a combination of Baylor spread and Wisconsin just smash mouth football. Whoever thought. Is that uh, a phrase? Because he said, I have some badger blood in me. Yeah. I was like, does that just sound really good? Or is that something they use? Like badger blood. I don't know. Russ <laughs> says, what, uh, a whole pack of badgers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never heard badger blood before, though. Because it is, like it is. It's spread offense with a power run game. Mm -hmm. And it, that, like, it's one of those things that, Seems like it sounds too good to be true. Right. When you see that Kent State offense humming, yeah, it is exactly that. Like it's smash mouth and spread at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one day we'll have uh, Coach Lewis sitting in here and we'll get to break it down even further. I'm gonna have to zoom out the cameras a little bit so he's <laughs> yeah. so, so damn tall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll get like a. I don't know, we'll have to put the camera higher up, I guess, or something, <laughs> just to get it all. We'll just put our chairs on stilts. There you go. 
Um, Alyssa, let's do the Brett Bartoloni video uh, talking about Shador Sanders. Um, he was obviously his OC last year at Jackson State. Now the wide receivers coach at CU. Uh, knows Shador pretty well, I think, though. Yep. Whenever you're ready. Hi, Coach. Uh, Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Uh, you worked closely with Shador Sanders last season. How do you overall describe his play style as a quarterback? And do you think he's, of course, you'd probably say yes, but do you think he's ready for this Power 5 opportunity? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, as far as arm talent goes, um, he's as good as I've I've seen at this level. You know, uh, you know, I've I've been around you know guys like like Carson Strong, who's a two-time Mountain West um, player at Nevada, and I mean, he he could touch anywhere on the field. Shador can. He he really can. He could process really fast. He understands what defenses are trying to do to him. Um, you know, as a quarterback, he has a very very high IQ level. He he really does. And so, um, you know. He's he's still developing. He's still young. You know, he's going into his junior year, and and this is a big off season for him. But you know, he he has the 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 coaching. You know, yeah, he, ha he has the coaches around him. He has the offensive line. You know, he, he's got receiver receivers around him. So he he's got a, a system around him. Um, it's just a matter of making sure everyone's on on the same page. And he he's going to do big things this year. There's no doubt about it. Hype man. He said something in there that we didn't talk about yesterday, which was that Shador is still developing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it's something that especially the um, doubters miss. Like, yes, he is making a big leap uh, from the swag to the pack. Um, maybe not as big as some people think, but a big jump regardless. And I, th I feel like people are just looking at the Shador last year, who, in my opinion... Last year, Shador is still a top five quarterback in the Pac-12 last year. Yeah. What is being missed is what he is capable of from a development perspective. No one is taking their development more seriously in the entire country than Shador Sanders is. Um, and what he's capable of, not just physically, he can grow up. He also is going to grow up mentally. He's going to have more reps and, and you know, more experience uh, with live bullets under his belt and a better supporting cast. I mean, this is, like, we've talked about it a little bit, but I wouldn't be shocked if he's projected to be a first-round pick after this year. Right. Uh, also, another thing, I mean, we've talked about it a while ago, but, I mean, he's getting a bump up in facilities in ability to help take <coughs> care of it and recover his body from workouts, too. I mean... This is just going to be the best all-around environment he's been in as a quarterback, and it could really just change the the arc of his trajectory at this point. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait. I'm um, so excited even just for spring practice just to watch him throw the rock. Yep. It's just Travis Hunter. <laughs> uh, let's do Gary Harrell. Uh, one of the bottom ones. Uh, <laughs> it was an interesting question. It was actually about the weather, but what uh, Coach Harrell said at the end – was pretty notable, um, and then we also heard him talking about his ideal, I guess, vision for the backfield when it comes to a lead back. Also, this quote about the weather is funny. Uh, whenever you're ready, Alyssa. <coughs> Gary Harrell, it's 2:23. Titled "Flea Sleeping Giants." I think he's still adapting. Um, you know, in Jackson, when I, when I first met Coach Prime, we all know, we know when it's practice time, uh, when he come outside, if it's raining, if it's chilly, we're not going outside, no matter what. I mean, he do not like the rain, he do not like the cold. And it's interesting because when Colorado was, you know, somewhere in the picture as far as being a possibility, we thought no way, you know, no way possible because of Coach Prime. You know, he's a, he's a Florida guy. You know, he loves those, those type elements. Um, but I think when he came here and saw the area, you know, and while we're here, you know, even myself, I like Colorado, no way, you know, being from Miami. But it's a different type of code. You know, it feels different, and we feel like we can adjust. But just everything surrounding this place, this is a sleeping giant, and we, we could not let weather be a factor as far as making that decision. But you best believe, you, you know, when it's raining, when it's cold, we'll be inside when it comes to practice. Hey, Coach, uh, Tony Casolo, Buffalo's Wire. In an ideal world, yes. do you see uh, the running backs group having a bell cow or, you know, and identifying one running back or doing more of a running back by committee? You know, we'd like to find that one guy. 
not as all-purpose guy. In this offense, you know, you got to be smart. You got to think like a quarterback when it comes to protection, when it comes to understand what we call the box, uh, things of that nature. So you got to know how to think like a quarterback. You got to be well conditioned because, you know, Sean, you know, he dials it up. You know, he goes pretty fast. So with those things, being smart, being well conditioned, being tough, being able to compete, you know, playing some special teams, you know, we believe, you know, I know a lot of coaches are going to say the, thing, the same thing, but we feel like we're the toughest group, you know, tougher position on the team. We want to have that same mindset. Um, do we have that guy? You know, we got to go through spring and find out, you know, as far as the guy on the team. Deion Smith does some great things. You know, Hank is a smaller guy, but he plays tough. And we have some guys coming in, but we're going to take our time as far as evaluating guys in the spring just to find that right guy because, you know, we spread guys out to load in that box, make the box uh, conducive to what we're trying to do for the run game. And we got to make sure we have a guy that can take full advantage that's going to be disciplined, get downhill in the run game. It's going to be where he need to be protection-wise, but just be that, that quarterback in the backfield and making the right checks and right reads. Ryan, you said it earlier in the week or last week. Colorado's a sleeping giant. Gary Harrell agrees. Amen. Amen. Uh, and it's, it's so obvious based on the fan response. You know, sleeping giant can be thrown around about anyone who's ever had success. But to be a giant, you have to have a giant fan base. And selling 30,000 tickets to a spring game what over a month, a month and a half before the game is even played, that's giant behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just can't wait to see what it looks like that day, what it looks like when we can stop talking about this and start seeing it. Because the second that they go out there uh, and show the world what they've been working on and, and what they're building at Colorado, to the moon. Yep. Love the uh, Deion Smith and Anthony Hankerson shout outs too. Yes. I love that Deion Smith got mentioned first. Absolutely. Big, uh, big year of Deion. Yeah, for sure. People are going to be surprised by him, man. A lot of talk about Kavassia Smoke, Dylan Edwards, but... Which we love. Of course, but Dion's going to go out and he's going to play. I mean, he can do it all. Mm -hmm. Which is a great, great quality to have as a college running back. Um, Brewster or O'Boyle? Let's finish with Brew, okay. like we did in uh, real life. All right. Um, the Coach O'Boyle one. Alyssa, if you want to do the 257 one... Um, this is us back to back again. Let's go. Uh, whenever you're ready. Jordan and Pippen. Yes, sir. Uh, you said? Yep. Yep. Okay. Hey, Coach Jake Schwanitz, DMVR Sports. Uh, you obviously followed Coach Lewis over, but you guys also brought uh, Savion Washington with you. What kind of player are you? Is Colorado getting in him, and what can you do for this offense? You're getting a great character kid. Uh, you're getting a great athlete. Uh, I've known Savion, man. He came to our camps at Kent when he was a sophomore or junior. Uh, 6'8", man, I think he's been 6'8 forever. And uh, he is, he's really grown into a great player. You know, and, and his, I think his ceiling is still climbing. I think he's, he's got a lot of potential. And uh, we're still working with that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I was holding my breath the whole time. You know, when, you, when you're at the power five now, or when you're at the group of five, and you develop a kid as a freshman or sophomore in this, this day and age, you're holding your breath the whole time that somebody doesn't come in and take them. You know, and that was the deal with Savion. We knew, uh, matter of fact, I talked to Coach Lewis this summer at a summer camp, and we were watching uh, some bigger athletes, some kids in some camps, and I just said, man, it, it's just a matter of time for Savion. You know, and uh, fortunately, we end up coming here and we end up getting him here. So, uh, big things ahead for Savion. Hey, Coach Ryan, Konigsberg, DNVR. Uh, you use the word fun when talking about this offense for offensive linemen. When I watch it, I, I think of the word demanding. Uh, I'm curious if you agree with that, and, and if so, what's the key to coaching this and getting guys uh, to, to, you know, work in this system? Uh, you know, I think overall just work ethic. You know, I, I wouldn't call it demanding. I think uh, – 
I think it's just part of the job. And, you know, one of the things we take a lot of pride in, and it's just from the guys that coached me and the guys, the offensive line coaches, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up under. Um, the fun comes with winning, obviously. And uh, that's what we have to work toward. Uh, but just the daily grind of it when you're out there is taken away by what you do. You know, being able to pull on a safety, uh, being able to uh, pull from the backside all the way to the corner on the other side. I mean, the things we can do with this offense, like I said, you're not just running three yards and turn around and getting in a huddle. You know, those days are gone with this group. So um, I think the funnest part for me right now is, is the practices, obviously, and just developing these guys in the offseason and looking forward to spring ball. You know, it's going to be night and day compared to what they're used to, and I'm, I'm hoping they believe me, and I'm, I'm reminding them every day. Got him to talk about pulling linemen, Ryan. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I feel my maturity as a football fan has arrived when I appreciate a great pulling lineman. Yep. Like, That's when you know you've made it. Right. <laughs> That's when you know you're like, oh, this is a – this is football nirvana. I'm yep. fired up about that that uh, tackle getting all the way out to the corner on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and you and I like text back and forth Instagram videos of like sick guard tackle yeah. counters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Can't wait for more of uh, watching this offense this time in black and gold in Colorado. We got a couple more uh, Bill of Boyle clips. Um, like I said yesterday, he said a lot of great stuff. So thoughtful. Yeah, for a guy who uh, didn't say much in the initial team meeting, he's a, a very bright and very good coach just from talking to him yesterday, it seems. Yep, for sure. Let's go with the let's go with the one minute eleven second one, Alyssa. Um it is titled I actually don't know what it's titled. Thank Did you find got it? it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, hi, Coach. Uh, Jack Carlo with the Buffalo's Wire. Uh, not sure how much film you've watched. I know Coach Lewis said he hasn't watched much, but just curious what your overall thoughts are on the current group of O-linemen at CU. A lot of work. A lot of work to do. And that's just from uh, – I'm never going to knock any other programs or any other staffs, but, you know, we've got a lot of ground to make up strength-wise. Uh, the physical part really has to come along. And that's something that jumped out right off the bat. And, uh, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, but I think the overall development, and like I said before, I, I think getting these guys in a mindset to where you're going to run, you, we're going to run 100 plays a game, and we might hit 150 plays in practice. You know, just getting that attitude to where get yourself ready. You know, it's coming. And I mentioned that before, and, and you hope they believe you. Uh, but it, it's – I think right now the kids are doing a great job in the weight room. They're doing a great job with the little time we get with them uh, throughout the week, and that's why I said before I, I am I cannot wait until spring ball. A lot of work to do, Ryan. You and me both, Coach Ob. Yeah, <laughs> cannot wait. Uh, also, I'm thankful that I'm not one of those 330 pound dudes who has to get in great shape. Yep. <laughs> yep. I spoke to. I would like to get in great shape. <laughs> Maybe just uh, join the off-season workout program at CU. I would be very down to try that. I spoke to someone in the program yesterday, uh, kind of before we got to talk to the coaches, and asked them, "Are the guys act? Do you think they're working harder? Are they doing stuff diff actually differently in the off-season workouts than they did in previous years?" He said, "Yeah, he thinks they are doing more. The guys are getting worked a lot harder this year. And if you're going to run a hundred plays a game, gonna have to." I mean. It, I love the honesty from him saying of how much work they have to do because <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, <clears throat> I think he alluded to this a little bit. He wouldn't, he wouldn't say something like this directly, but, like, kind of have to uncoach a few things too. Yeah. Um, we're only a little bit removed from the Buffs having – essentially like an infomercial guy as their offensive line coach. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, they got rid of him and got better at the position over the last year and a half. But 
there was some wild shit going on on this coaching staff, especially at that position. Uh, so I think there's some uncoaching that has to be done and then a lot of coaching that has to be done because he didn't want to say demanding and, and thinking back on it, I'm like, well, maybe that's not good for recruiting to say it's demanding on offensive line. But what mm -hmm. I meant that as a compliment right. to him because I think that offensive linemen in this system have to truly get it. Mm -hmm. You can't just be big and strong. I think that can get you by in certain like drop back passing systems. Yeah. Slide left, slide right. Right. Just be like this is a coach. Maybe it's mo more demanding on him than anyone else, but he has to be able to, to impart that knowledge on those kids. And if they don't, if they don't get it, and they don't know exactly where to go on every play, it will not work. Yep. So there is a lot of work to be done. Final clip we have is why Bill O'Boyle decided to follow Sean Lewis. This is a great one. And what he w admires so much about Sean Lewis. Uh, whenever you're ready, Alyssa. Hi, Coach. Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Uh, I'm curious just how you got involved in conversations in coming to Colorado with uh, Sean Lewis. Um, basically, I'm along with Coach Lou. Uh, I'm the uh, offensive line coach and been with him for five years. And uh, just uh, overall honor to be with him, learn his system. And uh, being the offensive line coach, he called me in about two weeks before our last game and just said, what do you think about Colorado? And I, you know, I'd been out here for just about 20 years, north here about five hours, and I uh, said, coach, it didn't matter where he went, I was going with him. You know, so that's what it came down to. But, uh, again, it's an honor to be here. It's great to be back in this area. I uh, know a lot of people around here, coach a lot of kids around here. Uh, so it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's great to be here in Boulder. Ryan, two weeks before their last game would have been mid-November. So Sean Lewis and Bill O'Boyle were ready to come in mid-November. And when did, when did uh, we get Coach Prime officially? It was, I think, the first weekend in December. <laughs> it's crazy how these things come together over time. Yep. And, I mean, we've heard a little bit of the story. Actually, we've heard a lot of the story. But, you know, we're sitting there in mid-November, and I I've told this story before, but, like, the whole time people kept saying, don't sleep on Coach Prime. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, I try to tell people not to be cynics now, but I was cynical then, and I was like, that would be the sickest thing ever, but there's no way, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. no way. And they're like, there might be a way. There might be a way. <laughs> to put it into perspective how crazy that is, in the middle of November, the Buffs just lost their best player in Jordan Tyson. Mm -hmm. They were in the middle of a gauntlet playing Oregon, USC, Washington, and Utah. They were smack dab in the middle of that. And Coach Prime was scheming to come to Colorado. Insane. Crazy. Insane. Uh, Adrian in the comments, a little bit above this, said, uh, he said, I wanted to give you guys, you guys props. I went back and listened to the show right before you got Coach Prime and everything you guys said about what it would be like if you got Coach Prime was right, which is funny to think Let's about. Go. But like, even <clears throat> at the Utah game, I, you know, it was like 55 and sunny that day. Yeah. I like tweeted out. I heard at Coach Prime doesn't like the cold. Mm -hmm. Not cold here. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I don't, even then, I felt like I was like doing a bit. Right. Like, it was like, at that point, I was like maybe over 51%. <laughs> like, okay, this might actually happen. But all of that, like, Sean Lewis and Bill O'Boyle are plotting to come to Colorado mm -hmm. while well, I'm sitting there thinking it's a pipe dream. Yep. I remember uh, at the Utah game, last game, we did post game media. Um, it was emotional for Coach Sanford and a lot of the players. And I walked down after uh, media availability to the field, took a picture of the field, posted it on Twitter, and said, "Next, last time for a while. Hopefully, next time it's prime time." Kind of the same as you. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, this will get about seventy likes." Like <laughs> speaking it into existence yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Like this will be a good tweet. <clears throat> little did I know, exactly what was coming. Wow, crazy. Um, before we finish it all off with Coach Brewster. Shout out to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. Get to 200 likes by the time Jake finishes his ad. There you go. Shout out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Ryan, you fucking nailed it last night. Nuggets yes. money line, Jokic triple double. What was it plus 260? Parlay, plus 260. I put a considerable amount on it and uh, had a great night. Unreal, man. <laughs> Good stuff. 
Uh, the Buffs were struggling, man. I think they were what, three point dogs going into that game last night. Lost by 18, I believe. I sometimes like to just bet on the Buffs just for the fun of it. Right. Couldn't even bring myself to do it last night. Yeah. <clears throat> um, sad. Also, sad ending to the women's game. I know. Bummer. They were that close, man. Right there. I didn't. I was trying to find a stream. I couldn't find it, but I was just watching on the game cast on my mm-hmm. phone. So they're up two. No, they're up one with five seconds left in the first overtime. And apparently they fouled and they mm-hmm. called it a shooting foul. I saw people on Twitter were like, it should not have been a shooting foul. Um, and then the girl basically had a free throw for the win because she hit the first one to right. tie. Missed it. It goes to double overtime. Sounds like the Buffs just got overpowered in double overtime. Uh, they'll be fun to watch as we go through March Madness, though. Absolutely. Um, so will the Buffs as we go through the Pac-12 tournament. Check out... Rolling our table away. I know. That scared me. <laughs> um, go to DraftKings Sportsbook right now. If you bet $5 on any game, you can get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Again, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA with code DMBR. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Yes, I swear TV, they were playing Bucky's music at the game. A little money old. A little money old. That is such a banger, by the way. They're kind of all are bangers. <laughs> they, they really are, but money old is like, that's an S-tier song, bro. <laughs> that shit is so hype. Um, I was at the game, of course, and just kind of walk, going through stats and everything. And I heard the song going, and I was like, this kind of sounds like Bucky. And I was like, wait, it is. And I looked right over to them, and they were just, it's the video, basically, that you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a good vibe out there last night. Good work by uh, um, the whoever's in charge of PA? the music. Yeah, yeah. The DJ. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's finish up these clips from yesterday with our guy, Coach Brew. Sparky said, infomercial coach, are you referring to R- Mitch Rodrigue? He looks like the flex seal guy. I was mostly referring to the fact that he like got his name by creating like the rod system, which literally sounds like something out of Hot Rod, um, <laughs> which was like his own blocking sled. He literally got a job because uh, he created a blocking sled. Crazy. Bad news. I mean, put the put that guy and, and Bill O'Boyle in a room, just like hear them talk, it would be embarrassing. Yep. Uh, Bill Boyle hasn't made a sled, but damn good football coach. Damn good football coach. Beloved by those who played for him at Shadron State. Um, let's talk about a damn good recruiter. And the question I asked him, it's the one minute, 58 second one, Alyssa. Tim Brewster on why he's such a good recruiter. Hey, Coach. Jake Schwann at DMVR Sports. <clears throat> I'm just curious, uh, in your time, you've been a pretty accomplished recruiter. What do you think makes you such a good recruiter and able to relate to these kids? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm about relationships and relating to kids and talking to them on a level that they can understand. You know, the, the whole key in recruiting is, okay, you're going to make a phone call, right? You're calling a recruit, and is that recruit looking forward to your phone call? Is he freaking jacked that Coach Brew is getting ready, you know, is, is on the other line calling him? And, I, you know, you really strive to build that type of relationship with kids and, and, you know, build a relationship that's on a level away from the game. You know, truly getting to know uh, a, a kid, you know, as a human being, you know, and letting them know. I think the whole key to success as a coach is making sure your players understand that you genuinely care about them. You genuinely care about them, their families. If they believe you genuinely care, they're going to give you their heart and soul. You know, if a, if a recruit believes that I really care about him and his mom and the situation at home and, and all those different things, you know, he's going to gravitate to me. And, and, and that's, that's why I'm successful as a recruiter is, is I think that, you know, I love people. I love the interaction. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys in college football that don't enjoy recruiting. You know, I do. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I, I look forward to doing it every day. I do it every day. 24-7, 365. It's recruiting. That's the name of the game. Player acquisition. And I know this. When, when I'm coaching Antonio Gates... When I'm coaching Kyle Pitts, everybody's saying, God dang, he's a heck of a coach. Well, I'm going to go recruit great players, and I'm going to be a heck of a coach. 
that's, you know, I mean, that's how it is. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, like, when I'm coaching those guys, everyone's saying what a great coach I am. But it really is just the fact that I recruited such right. great players. Right. This <laughs> is just so good. I also just realized that in the Coach Prime movie about how he brought Colorado back to relevance and, you know, led us to five straight national titles. Um, Tim Brewster is going to be played by Woody Harrelson. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Who plays Coach Prime? Oh. Do we get to play ourselves potentially in this movie? Do we play a role? Dang, we get to be like a – like my friend Anthony Gargano uh, is a radio guy out in Philly in the movie Hustle. Uh-huh. Uh, it's like obviously about the Sixers. Right. He got to play a radio guy in Philly in that movie. That would be go. us. Yeah, maybe we, we just need a five-second clip of like a media montage, and we're just in these chairs doing our thing. Yes, I love it. Um, last clip. I'll let, chat, chat should tell us who plays Coach Prime. There you go. Um, let us know who plays Coach Prime in the documentary. Also, hit us with your questions and hit that thumbs-up button before we get to your questions. You were going to say something? Nope. Oh. Uh, last video. And the moment of the press conference, oh, I guess. God. I'm curious to see how this looks on camera. It actually doesn't sound bad in terms of the audio. Okay. Um, you can kind of hear them. It's obviously a different mic. But uh, the 216 Coach Brew video, Alyssa, whenever you're ready. But you're, are, you're, you, you're, are you you're, referring to my welcome to I'm the team? Welcome to the stand up, sit down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Little, little the full metal jacket bit. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's been wonderful. It really has. And, and I think that it, the Colorado buff people are so want to win. They're so, I think, you know, it's time to win again. And to win, you have to have amazing pride in the name on the front of your jersey and the name on the back of your jersey. Okay? And when I asked the team to stand up, I didn't sense... A tremendous, you know, like stand up with the pride that you're representing the University of Colorado. I didn't sense that, okay? And I wanted, I wanted those players to, to feel, I'm proud to be a Colorado buff, okay? And, and for us to turn this thing and win, it, it's going to take tremendous player pride. Stand up with your head up and your shoulders back and be excited about where you are. We're not walking softly, okay? We're bringing it with every single thing we got, okay? And, you know, there's, there's certain people that, that, that maybe, you know, God, I, got, I love the game so much. You know, I love the game so much. And the game deserves to be rewarded by how we... You know, how we do things and how we carry ourselves. I believe if you love football, football is going to love you back. You know, and, and so uh, uh, I don't know. You guys tell me. You know, there's, uh, there's some people that, you know, all I know is this, is that I, Tim Brewster, am going to pour every ounce of everything I got into making this program great again. And if our players and every other coach responds the same way, we're going to win. What coach, coach Prime said, we're coming. I'm waiting to say we're here. <laughs> That's a great place to end it. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Thanks. the time. Legend. Absolutely. Fucking legend. legend. Woody Harrelson's going to kill that part. Yep. <laughs> uh, Angela with the best comment in there. Shiloh, of course, will be playing Coach Prime. No one imitates Coach Prime I better know. than Shiloh. <laughs> How did we forget? <laughs> uh, some so good. Uh, uh, Jamie Foxx, Denzel Washington, Lou Young. Yep. Some great comments in there. Uh, you guys were talking about this Isaiah Jada uh, photo. We just pulled it up. Obviously, Zico's there at tight end. Tyler Brown at left uh, guard. Van Wells at center. Um, I can't really see the right side of the line. Yeah, I'm guessing. I don't think that's Savion Washington at left tackle. I think that's him at probably at right tackle. And then it looks like maybe Landon Beebe at right guard. How are you seeing that? Well, Landon Beebe's white. Oh, you're going off his hand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. And then left tackle, I will have to do some reconnaissance on this. Yeah. Looks huge. That's all yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, but, man, does that get you fired up? It does get me fired up. God. I can't, like, 
it's not healthy for me to be this excited <laughs> this far away from football season. <laughs> like I don't know I don't know where to channel this energy. It's crazy, man. We're literally six plus months away from the first game still. And like I had a conversation today about some cool stuff we might be able to do during the season. And I'm just like, ah, I want this to start the next weekend. Mm -hmm. Can't come soon enough. Um, before we get to your guys' questions, hit that thumbs up button. Also, make sure you check out the actual podcast. Go to your favorite podcasting app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We would appreciate your subscription and also your five-star review if you are enjoying the show. Yeah, we have five stars on Spotify, mm -hmm. but only like 50 reviews. We gotta, we definitely got to get to triple digits there. Yep, we're um, at triple digits on Apple, but only four and a half stars. Yeah, and those are reviews spanning like seven different iterations of the I know, the show. it's crazy to go back and read. <laughs> so we got to, uh, we got to, you, we need your help having this show, this version of the show, yes. uh, be properly rated. Um, DCB, Breckenridge, please make a Coach Brew. <laughs> Coach Brew. There you That's go. That's fire. Um, questions. You know what it really should be, though? It should be Coach Brew's Cold Brew. There you go. Because it gives you energy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, maybe that is what makes a good recruiter. Just being energetic and willing to talk to people. I thought you were going to say coffee. Well, coffee, too. <laughs> but uh, No, like... I think he truly does love recruiting, but even if he doesn't, just like lying to yourself and telling yourself you love recruiting is really important. Right, yeah. You have to like convince yourself to love the parts of your job that are hard, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's something you're passionate about. Like yeah. if you have a job that you hate, well, that's going to be hard. But like if you want to be in coaching, you can get a leg up on everyone else by loving the hard parts mm -hmm. because they're going to half-ass it. Mm -hmm. And so many coaches half-ass recruiting – because it's hard and annoying and you have to call literally 16 to 18 year old kids and like compete for their attention and you're a grown man with an ego mm -hmm. and these kids are like big timing you yeah it's a different game like even i hated calling recruits when i worked for rivals right and getting big timed by 16 year olds like nah man sorry i don't have time to talk to you right now and i'm like what do you you definitely do <laughs> put the controller down yeah, exactly bro <laughs> call of duty can wait I want, all you have to do is answer like three questions for me to be able to do my job right. <laughs> um saeed who did coach meet at the media center where he was lost um i saw that video i know what you're talking about i think those are just students working at the building what's the media center <clears throat> it's not the media center they went to um some building it's on well off. Uh, him, Darius, and Rick George. Oh, where they were like walking up those stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got lost, and <laughs> Coach Prime like shouts down from the the third story or whatever, like, "Excuse me, <laughs> we're lost." <laughs> you imagine just looking up. It's, Coach, it's Prime. Coach Prime. Yeah, you hear a voice. You're like, I know that voice. You look up, and he's just <laughs> oh, crazy. <clears throat> All right, questions. Whenever you're ready. Uh, was it deep? No, I defensive press conference was not today. That's next week. Next Thursday. Yes. Um, next question. Did y'all see the huge national championship replica trophy in the buffs room? They mean biz. The one that's always been there. Or is there a new one? I'm assuming the one that's always been there. And I think that's, is that a replica? No, that's, yeah. that's the trophy. Yeah. Um, the one where like, it's in the destroying video where they're like, man, they made it out of wood back yeah, then. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I've uh, taken a picture with that. So is Jimmy Horn. I also got a picture with Alyssa's Stanley Cup ring yesterday. Same here. Um, but I just have ugly fingers, so I didn't post it anywhere. Oh, <laughs> I posted it on uh, uh, Instagram, and I got a lot of likes on it. Shout out to good. Alyssa for having yeah. a Stanley Cup ring and then letting us like touch it. Yeah, appreciate. I don't you, know Alyssa. if I would have been as generous if it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I would have kept mine in the box. Probably would have never opened it. Uh, next question. From Jay, Jake, did you anticipate all the places Coach Brewster took us with your question? No hat, Jake definitely gets the award for uh, eliciting eliciting the best answer of Thank media you. day. He said so much about Prime and JSU. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was expecting at least a decent explanation, but he <laughs> did kind of go. Uh, I didn't expect a Kyle Pitts and Antonio Gage shout out or whatever we got. So it's, it's fun talking to coaches like that because you don't have to. 
tee him up too much for them to just go. Right. You know, mm -hmm. he's got so many thoughts and yeah. feelings and takes in his head. All the coaches were great yesterday, though. Every question was asked. They kind of went yeah. a bit out of their way and answered even more than we thought. So Yeah, super thoughtful. Everyone seems like they actually wanted to be there. Yep. Next question from Chad. Jake, do you think Peyton and Brady coming to Boulder to help Shador? Um, Peyton, Sean, Sean Peyton? Peyton, Peyton I, Manning, I would guess. Yeah, Sean Peyton's a little busy. Um, I mean, Brady, why not, man? What's I, he doing? I am expecting a Tom Brady cameo at some point. I just don't know when. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. He's got a lot of time to fill now. Uh, Jay, with another question, this time for you, Ryan. Did it suck that Sean Payton would not sit for an interview in Arizona, unlike Coach Prime, who must reach a national audience for recruiting? An NFL coach's first obligation is to his city, i.e. DMVR. Uh, no, I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, it's kind of the, It was similar to Coach Prime in the sense of, like, these guys come in, they have these big media agencies who book them out for these, these shows. Would I love and do I envision a day where we're part of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are we there right now? No, not yet. <clears throat> but we're working towards it. Um, so I knew as soon as Sean Payton showed up on Radio Row, like, all right, let's get to grinding to see if we can somehow get him. It was the same thing with Coach Prime, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I walked around place to place, talking to put Coach Prime's people, trying to see, hey, can I sneak in for three questions in between this set and the other set? In the end, the answer was no. With Sean Payton, uh, <laughs> I – just went balls to the wall. I was like, I'm, I'm this is like our last day here. Mm -hmm. This is the last interview that like, if we get this one, it's just like a, the cherry on top of a sick week for us on the Broncos show. So I was just, I kind of just refused to take no for an answer. Uh, and finally we got him walking when we did. So no, I, I get your point. Um, and I think that there will come a day where, one of the first thing any coach does when they come to town is, you know, an interview with DNVR. Mm -hmm. um, but we got to get there. We got to keep working. One day, man. Yep. That's what uh, Bucky says. One day. One day. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to – oh, next question. Uh, Big TZ, how did you feel about the Buffs not practice outside in rain or cold? I mean, it's winter. It's expected. I don't want to practice outside yeah. in the rain or cold either. No one does. They got the IPF for a reason. Use it. I will say, um, you know, let's say you've got a game. You're playing Utah at home last week of the season. Mm -hmm. This forecast is calling for 15 degrees. Like, maybe your last practice of the week is outside. Just say, hey, yeah. this is what it's going to be like, boys, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those guys probably haven't spent too much time playing football outside yeah. in the cold. So I think you have to work up to it. Uh, we joke about this all the time uh, on the Broncos podcast, but one time it was like negative two or something, and the Broncos practiced inside, and Vance Joseph had this quote where he was just like, well, when it's cold, it's tough. So that's why we practice inside. <laughs> and so now just any time it's cold, we just go, when it's cold, it's tough. It's true, though. I think back to high school, like the amount of practices I was forced to play in the rain and just outside, and it's like I probably would have – like taken so much more coaching and just learned so much more and had better practices mm -hmm. if i wasn't having to battle mm -hmm. the elements at oh, the same and, time and that that is actually what vance joseph later went on to he's like it's kind of hard to get the players to focus when they're freezing right which makes sense yeah for sure when you're just sitting there like god damn i'm so cold god damn yeah i can't i could i probably can't even count on one hand how many times i just ended up getting sick from having practice outside yep. in the cold and the rain yep not ideal 206 likes. Appreciate you guys. We're back. We're, we're going to 300. Oh, we let's go. Elfridi with the question. Uh, Jake and RK, what about getting a group of investors and buying time slots on ESPN for the CU Fall football? There we um, go. We're going to crowdsource the buffs getting on ESPN go. for all their games. <laughs> just to make, Better than I on TV. Just to make everyone's life easier so we can all watch the buffs. Yeah, I mean, we that GoFundMe would, uh, would sell yeah, out. Probably would at this point. Angela's back with another question. Jake and RK Coach Prime said the players' jerseys may feature their Instagram addresses on the back. Who brands better than CU? Players love this. Can't see Nick doing this. Assuming you're talking about Saban, I agree. And, uh, yeah, it's fantastic branding. This is a thing? They did it at JSU. For an actual game? Not for the game, but for their practice jerseys. They oh, had okay. their ats on the back, yeah. Yeah, I'm in on that for mm -hmm. sure. Um, fun fact, when I graduated from the University of Colorado... I put my at on the back of my gown. 
Goddamn legend, man. <laughs> Setting trends already, way back then. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, next question from... We just did that one. From Al. Ask Coach if you can work out with the team. <laughs> coach Prime always thinks outside the box for marketing. Um, that would be... I mean... You got those boys are working throwing up in the corner in <laughs> yeah. a well off video. That's that's funny. That's good content. Uh, as long as it's you and not me, yeah, yeah. for sure it It'll is. It'll be me. <laughs> Angelo with another one, Jake and RK. After hearing O'Boyle, do coaches at Bama, Georgia, Ohio State fear O line and D line men who see themselves not playing much uh, come to see you? Bama and Georgia O lines make them different. I mean, it's kind of already happened. You had Florida, uh, Yusuf Mugarbills come over and uh, high mark so far. Yeah, Coach Bruce Sun said he's one of the standouts. Um, Wonder where he heard that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be many more uh, Bama, Georgia, Clemson, yeah. Ohio State players. I think it in. could happen as soon as next month. Yeah, for sure. Nicholas, could you guys? Th- who do you guys believe will be the best unit, defense or offense? Offense. Yeah. I think I'm with you. It's hard to pick, honestly. It is. And I've talked about it <clears throat> a lot, but having Travis and Cormani across from each other just makes defense so easy. Um, that being said, Shador is just, I've, you know, to me, other than Coach Prime, the most important addition of everyone. Yeah. Um, he is different. And I think he's going to have that offense absolutely humming. There it is. Another banger week. Five shows, two draft pods. We're going to do a basketball show on Sunday, too. There you go. Podcast feed is popping. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up on the way out. We'll see you all next week. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs.